Hey everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I want to share with you two tricks you could use when doing a difficult cutout such as this for use in a composite. All right, I'm going to show you how to cut out the model from the white background and drop her into a different scene. Unfortunately, I don't really have a great scene to drop this type of image into, so I'm just going to drop her on a beach. It's not gonna look that great, but it will allow me to show you those two tricks I mentioned at the top. So we're gonna start out with the model. Um, what we need to do is clip her out from that white background. Now there's all different types of techniques and tools in Photoshop that allow you to do this. What I'm going to use is the magic wand tool. I'm going to use it to select the background because the background is pretty uniformly white. And up top, we're going to use a point sample. Tolerance of 20, I found, works well. Um, what you may find is when you click, it may not sample all the white in the background. So you're going to have to adjust the tolerance so that you're selecting as much white as possible. And in prepping for this video, I found that a tolerance of 20 works pretty well. So I'm gonna click just once right on the background and you can see we have this really elaborate selection, but it's actually selecting the background. We need the model and her flowing red fiery dress selected. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to select and mask. And I have it set with a view of overlay and that is giving us this red overlay. Wherever the red is, that's what's not selected. We have the background selected, that's the white part we need to make sure that we flip that. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna click on the little invert button. Now you could see we have the model selected and you could see our selection isn't as good as we might think it is. We have a lot of white fringing. So we're going to deal with that by getting the second brush from the top. This is the refine edge brush. We're gonna be in plus mode on the brush and we're just going to use the bracket keys to resize it. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller. Now, uh, we have a lot of white fringing around her hair, so I'm just going to paint on her hair, and I'm actually not too concerned if it doesn't get every strand of hair, or even if there's still a little bit of white fringing there, because that's where our two tricks that I'm going to show you come in and help. So we're just gonna do the best we can and get as much of that white fringing gone. So we'll just brush in there like that. Um, then we're going to just come in here and get this part of her dress. Now I'm just going to get a large brush, a really large brush, and we'll just do this as quickly as possible. We'll get all this dress up in here. It may seem like I'm being really sloppy about it, and the truth is I am. But that's where these two tricks really help. Um, so I'm going to Smaller brush, we have a little bit of a white fringe down here, and we have a little bit around her foot down here, a little bit around her toe over there. And this part between her chin and shoulder is not selected at all, so we'll come in and get that. Okay, so we got, we still have some white fringing, you know, but this is really good enough. So what sometimes helps though, when you have an image such as this with, you know, the, kind of, it looks like it's selected, but it's not really selected. If you click on decontaminate color, sometimes that will help improve it. And you can see it did improve it considerably. When you do click on that though, you're limited to what you could output it to. The first two choices will be grayed out when you have decontaminate colors checked. That is selection and layer mask. You have to use one of the lower four choices. We're gonna use new layer with layer mask. We're gonna click okay. And now you can see there's our selection. It looks pretty good here. Once we drop it in the scene though, it may not look as good and we'll have to do something there. But right now it looks good. Now these two tricks that I'm going to be showing you, uh, they only work on a layer without a layer mask. Now if I just drag her over there right here, it's gonna take the layer mask with it and we need to get rid of the layer mask. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna right click right on the layer mask and go down to apply layer mask. And that's it, we got rid of the layer mask. Now we're gonna get the move tool. The V key on the keyboard is the move tool. We'll click on our model, drag her up to the tab of the beach and drop her on the beach. 
and you can see it looks absolutely horrible, but we'll fix it. All right, now, a couple things. Um, the most difficult thing to do when you do a composite with a person or persons in a scene and their feet are showing is to make it look like they're actually standing in the scene instead of standing on top of the scene. And if you ever look at movie posters, which are most often composites from scenes and actors from the movie, you'll see that they never show their feet unless it's an actual photograph of them in the scene. They actually just will have it so their feet aren't being shown. And that is because that is the most difficult thing to sell, to get their feet looking like they're actually in the scene. So um, I'm going to do it, and I'll just cut off her feet at the bottom. And in a future video, I'll show you some things you could do to try to make it look like a person is standing in a scene better. None of them are super effective, to be honest. I mean, you really have to work at it. So I'm not going to show it in this video because it will just take too long. And quite frankly, I don't think it will look good uh, because uh, she's basically got no, she's gotten, doesn't have any shoes on and the beach itself is very granular and it's going to be difficult to make it look like she's actually standing in the sand. So we're just going to cut her feet right off. So as it is now, you know, it looks all right, but not, you know, right. We still have a lot of work to do. I'll just jump to these two tricks that I keep hyping. I do these in this order. All right. What you need to do is you need to go up to layer down to matting and then to defringe. Now by default, it's usually going to be at one pixel. You really don't need a lot here. Don't be tempted to put in 20 pixels or anything like that. One or two, three at the most. I'll just split it, go right in the middle and go two. Sometimes this will make it look fuller. Sometimes it doesn't do anything, but it doesn't hurt to try. So we're just going to try it with two and we'll look at the image, see if it does anything. And it really didn't do anything, but that's okay. Then I'll do the second thing. Go up to layer, down to matting, and then we want to either remove a white mat or a black mat. Now it had a white background, the original image. So any fringing that is happening is white. So I want to remove a white mat. Obviously, if you clip someone out from a black or a darker background, you're probably going to want to remove a black mat. So we're going to remove white mat and watch as soon as I click on that. All right, way fuller. So it's way better. But the red is too intense for this scene, right? So we're going to fix that too. We're going to go up to image adjustments and we're going to go to hue saturation. We're going to go to this master drop down and put it on reds and we want to probably bring that saturation down a little bit so now that looks much better maybe make it a little lighter maybe a little darker maybe a little darker it looks kind of cool all right so now it's looking a little better see how it looks much better her hair looks better everything looks pretty good uh except it still doesn't look real but i don't know let's see what we could do make it a little better uh, what we'll do is I'm going to put a stamp layer on top of these two layers. To do that on my Mac, I'm hitting Shift, Option, Command, E. On a PC, it's Shift, Alt, Control, E. Now I have this stamped layer at the top. It's basically these two layers joined together at the top. What I want to do now is I want to go to Filter and down to Camera Raw Filter. And then I'm going to make it smaller by hitting Command minus on my Mac. It's Control minus on a PC. I'm going to get the radial filter tool and I'm going to have exposure up. And then I'm just going to draw a radial filter like this. Like that. I think that looks pretty good. We'll just click OK. Now you can see that it's making it look a little better. It almost looks like she's walking into the light. It's still not a great composite, but I main just to this video was to show you those two tricks. Again, those two tricks are if you go to layer and you go down to matting, first is defringe and the other is remove white mat if you clipped it out from a lighter or white background and black mat if you clipped it out from a black or darker background. Also, you can see color decam decontaminate is grayed out. If you ever have an image and it just doesn't look quite right and that isn't grayed out, try that too. That sometimes helps as well. Uh, depending on how you did your composite, that may be grayed out, it may not. Um, but overall, um, that gives you a, hopefully an idea of how you could clip out something very difficult like this was 
and make it look uh, better when you drop it into a scene. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.